In Indonesia, elementary students are taught about respecting religious tradition. Exam question asks Muslim students what they should do if their Christian neighbors invite them to celebrate Christmas. We are probably the only country in the world where each religious holidays, Islamic, Catholic, Protestant, Hindu, Buddhist, are designated as national holidays, even though Hindus and Buddhists account for only 2.4% of our population. Through education, we have sought to ensure that tolerance and respect for religious freedom becomes part of our transgenerational DNA. Finally, the ninth imperative, global conscience. It is not easy to describe this, but this is what I saw in Aceh during the tsunami tragedy. On the 26th December 2004, giant tsunami waves crashed Aceh and Nias and 200,000 people perished in half an hour. The whole nation was in grief. But in this tragedy, we also found humanity. The whole world web and offered helping hands. Americans, Australians, Singaporeans, Chinese, Mexican, Indian, Turks, and other international volunteers worked hand in hand to help the Achehnis. I realized then there exists a powerful global conscience. One would think that the enormous pain of World War II would usher in a usher in a new dawn of world peace. That is why the United Nations was formed, but the human race ended up with many more wars. One would think the threat of the nuclear holocaust was enough to trigger nuclear disarmament, but the world saw more countries developing nuclear weapons. The question now is whether climate change would be able to foster a new global conscience. We are still not sure that it will. But a global conscience could well have transcend whatever civilization, religious and cultural divide that has faced humanity. So there are my nine imperative for harmony among civilization that I offer to you today. They will require a great deal of hard work. It will take the work of generation and decades. And it will require patience, perseverance, partnership, and lots of thinking outside the box. 18 years after the Cold War ended, 10 years into the 21st century, we find ourselves at a crucial crossroad. In front of us, maybe the most progressive century mankind has ever known, a century where, as Farid Zakaria says, more things will change in the next 10 years than in the past 100 years. It can be the sensory of possibility and opportunity. President Barack Obama spoke in Cairo of a new beginning between America and the Muslim world. Today, I say that we can reinvent a new world. It will be a world not of conquests, but of connectivity. It will be a world defined not by a class of civilization, but by the confluence of civilization. It will be a world marked by plenty, not by poverty. And it will be a vast empire of global minds breaking down centuries of civilizational collisions and hostilities. America, with all the economic, social, and technological resources at her disposal, has much to contribute to this new world. America's role in helping to reform the international system spread prosperity, empower the world's poor, resolve conflict, and share knowledge is a critical asset to a transforming world. Now is a golden opportunity for America to inundate the world with her soft power, not hard power. America should not worry about retaining its superpower status. America can help make the world anew. What could be more powerful than definitive than that. Indonesia, too, has a significant role to play. We can bridge between Islamic and the Western worlds. We can project the virtue of moderate Islam throughout the Muslim world. We can be the bastions of freedom, 
tolerance and harmony. We can be a powerful examples that once again, Islam, democracy, and modernity can go hand in hand. And we will continue to advance Indonesia's transformation through democracy, development, and harmony. This is why Indonesia and America now are evolving a strategic partnership. The world's second and the third largest democracies, the most powerful Western country, and the country with the largest Muslim population. Calibrated for the challenges of the 21st century, this partnership can strengthen regional stability, intercivilizational unity, and world peace. In the final analysis, West Ocean separate our countries, but our common search unite. We are both trying to redefine our place in the world. President Obama insists the 21st century can still be the American century. I am convinced that this could well be Asia's century. Then I thought, why can't it be everybody's century? It can be the American century. It can be the Asian century. It can be the European century. It can be the African century. And it can be the Islamic century. This can be an amazing century where hope prevails over fear, where brotherhood of man reigns supreme, where human progress conquers ignorance. It can be a sensory that not only bring us into a new millennium, but also elevate the bonds of humanity to greater height. In this century, no one loses, and everybody wins. Inshallah, I thank you.